Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, for quite a long time, till last week, there was this question repeatedly asked, are we ready for Qatar 2022? Many nations asked it, or they asked, some asked, is Qatar ready for the FIFA 2022? A longing, an expectation for something great that was coming. And last week, the banners changed. It read, Welcome to Qatar 2022, the FIFA World Cup. Preparations were not easy, as some of the pictures here show. But there was this excitement, and hence the preparations were joyful, exciting. That excitement of the opening of the World Cup banished all the pains and struggles of the long and laborious preparations. And we all joined the chorus. Welcome to Qatar. Welcome FIFA 2022. Today we ask a similar question. Are we ready for Jesus? Are we ready for the coming of the Lord? How far are the preparations? Though unfortunately, lesser number of people and nations ask it. But remember, if preparations are going on well, we will soon see the happy, exciting banner. Welcome to Christmas 2022. Welcome, Jesus. There is this one common message from these two events. Preparations are always difficult, but they become light, joyful, and exciting when we know the reason, the goal, what to expect. Of course, our concern is the Advent season we begin today. And we will focus on two points in our reflection. Firstly, we will see what is the spirit of Advent, or what are we preparing for? And secondly, we will see how we can properly prepare for it so that finally we see the message. Welcome. As we know, the word Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus, which means coming. But it's important to know what we mean by this coming of Jesus. For many of us, it's a preparation for Christmas. To remember the coming of Jesus that happened 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. And thus, it is a looking back. But we know that it is not the only coming that we remember and we prepare for, we wait for in the Advent season. There is this Roman god called Janus, or Janus, who has two faces, one looking forward and one backward. He is the god of beginnings, gates, doorways, passages, and so on. The month of January is named after Janus, as it looks back to the previous year and also looks forward to the new year. Advent has a very similar meaning, looking backward and looking forward. In the early church, these were days of intense preparations for the celebration of Christmas remembering what happened earlier in history, and thus a looking back. But eventually it became more liturgically structured, and also it imbibed the full meaning of the term. This means it is not only about the coming of Jesus in Bethlehem, but also about his second coming, which he often mentioned, predicted, in the Gospels. Thus, it involves a looking forward as well. Therefore, in the first half of the Advent season till the 16th of December, the liturgy focuses on the future event and from the 17th on the first coming of Jesus, his birth, the Christmas. And these two, as we know, are referred to 
as the first coming and second coming of Jesus, respectively. But the liturgy, the readings during the Advent season remind us of a third and more intense and immediate coming of Jesus, his daily coming into our lives. That is why the common theme we find in the liturgy is to stay awake, be vigilant. Yes, Jesus comes to us daily through the sacraments, through the word of God, and through the various events in our lives. And the liturgy reminds us that the proper preparation for the celebration of the first coming and getting ready for the second coming is by preparing daily for this third coming. In this sense, the preparation for the third coming of Jesus in the is the natural preparation for the other two comings. And one could always display the banner, Welcome Jesus, Welcome Christmas. If so, how do we prepare for this most important and immediate coming of Jesus? That is our second and main point of reflection. To me, it is not really meaningful to say that these four weeks of Advent are days of intense preparation. For this is, that is not our focus. We are asked to be ready always. But of course, these four weeks are given to us to have a new orientation, new focus in life. So today's readings challenge us to do only one thing, to focus fully on the Lord and not to miss him when he comes, when he passes by. Holy Father Pope Francis said in one of his Advent homilies, I quote, it is important to remain watchful because one great mistake in life is to get absorbed in a thousand things and not to notice God. And here he quotes St. Augustine who said, I fear that Jesus will pass by me unnoticed. Then the Holy Father continues, drawn to our own interests and distracted by so many vain things, we risk losing sight of what is essential. This focusing on the Lord is the theme of today's liturgy. Take the first reading. Let's go to the mountain of the Lord so that he may teach us his ways. That his mountain shall be higher than all other mountains. He shall judge between nations and decide for many people. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. So the Lord becomes the center. We are reminded of a similar focus by St. Paul in the second reading when he says, cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Or do the works of light. Or put on Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. In the gospel, Jesus says, that the coming of the Son of Man must be your only concern, so that you will not be caught in surprise by his second coming. Be awake, be ready, and be watchful, for he will come at a time you do not know. Focusing on the Lord means to give him first place in our lives. This is what prophet Isaiah means when he says, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Mountains were seen as a place of God experience, away from the busyness of the valleys. Down in the valley, too many things go on. But going up to the mountain top, you meet the Lord, as Moses did, as Jesus often was doing. It is not that we miss him because we are sleeping, but it is so easy to become distracted by the ordinary demands of life in the valley. It is so easy to overlook what is truly most important. Jesus comes to us in many guises, many ways. If you are not alert, we miss it all. When prophet Isaiah said, the mountain of the Lord will be established as the highest of the mountains, this idea becomes still clearer. We have so many mountains of our own. 
our job, our family, our friends, our concern, our interest. All are important places, mountains for us. But this must be the highest, the Lord's. Yes, in the days of Noah, the people went on eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, which means they were busy in the daily routine of normal life in their own mountains. In such a life, it might be easy to forget the coming of the Son of Man. Jesus says that the sin of the people was placing too much emphasis on the normal cares and necessities of life to the extent that they missed his coming. It is not running away from our responsibilities, but doing it in such a way that they are part of our preparations. As Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta said, whatever you do in your family, for your children, for your husband, for your wife, do for Jesus. Being involved in the world in our responsibilities and being prepared for the coming of Jesus are not two contradictory things. But the former should be and could be the means for the latter. God is always calling us to climb to the top of the mountain because our lives are cluttered with too many things demanding our attention, which drain us of our energies and blind us to the big picture. And dear sisters and brothers, lastly, the problem with preparations or Advent preparations is that unlike the World Cup, there is no immediate result. We don't know, not even the Son of Man, when it will happen. When will we see the board, welcome my son, daughter to heaven? We find it difficult. Most of us have problems with waiting. If it does not happen on the dot, now we become restless. This is why Advent reminds us of hope. As the first candle we light today on the Advent wreath is called the Hope Candle. Pope Benedict, in his second encyclical on hope, Space Salve says, For a Christian to have hope means to know that we are definitely loved and that whatever happens to us, we are awaited by love. Paragraph 3. This is what Pope Francis also means when he says, Advent is a season for remembering the closeness of God who come down or who came down to dwell in our midst. So, the question is, are we ready for His coming? If our preparations are fine, soon we will find the banner changing and we will see the banners displaying Welcome Christmas, Welcome Jesus. So we pray, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, not just at the end of the world, but now and every day in our lives. Amen.